I'm, a, I'm the president of uh, the Kiwanis Club in, in Johnston here uh, this year, and, and uh, this past, I don't know, a couple weeks ago or so, we took the club through uh, something called the I-Plan. And uh, actually clubs all over the, all, not the country, all over the world are, are doing this. And it's basically uh, every club sitting down and say, what are our goals for the year? I mean, you know, it's typical stuff. You probably do this at work or different organizations you might be a part of. What, what, what are my goals for the year? What are we going to accomplish? And that's, that's what all the clubs are doing. We took out all of our main things and, and uh, came up with goals in each area. And, and <coughs> excuse me, um, they were, um, you know, of course, very specific goals and measurable, and, and, and we had accountability factors in there and dates when they would be uh, accomplished and that type of thing. And so that's been on my mind a lot. And, and then I started thinking about, hey, uh, boy, we're having a church on January 1st. It seems like an appropriate uh, thing maybe to talk about uh, at, at church. It's goals, not, not Kiwana's goals, um, and not even church goals, but, but, but your goals. What are you, you going to do this year? I used to make goals for myself every single year. And I had a big plan, and I'd write it out, and I'd, had a, you know, I'd kept it in front of me and everything. And I don't know, the last 10, 15 years, I don't know, I don't know when I stopped. I, I just stopped. And I don't know if I just got lazy. I don't know if I just got busy, you know, whatever that is. Um, I, whatever, for whatever reason, I've read blogs that said, you don't need goals, just go out and do stuff, you know. And um, then I started looking at this stuff again for Kiwanis, thinking, you know, I'm a lot more productive when I have a goal. Uh, you know, I actually grow in my spiritual walk when I have a plan to grow in my spiritual walk. I, I actually do things with my family when I plan to do things with my family. And, and so I thought, let, you know, I need to make some goals this year. Now, I went to college back in the 80s when goals was all the rage, right? I mean, I mean maybe it was before that, but that's when I was old enough to, for the first time to, to hear all this stuff and, and actually listen. And, and that's back when uh, Stephen Covey was really hitting it big time. The Franklin Planner was like how you got things done and, and uh, had the Franklin Planner for years and years and years followed that thing. And it, and it was a great tool. Tried to do it digitally, never could make the transition. I, I don't know if it's them or me, but uh, somehow I, I do other digital things now. But um, we, we lived by these common slogans of the day back then. You know, a goal is a dream with a deadline, right? That you, you actually you put something to it. It's not just a dream. Someday I'm going to do whatever. Or you can say that your entire life and never do it. But if, when you actually put a deadline on it, you'll, you'll get it done. Or you give what you aim for. Or, or maybe you heard this one. Uh, through the years, you know, goals should be smart, right? Specific, measurable, appropriate, uh, realistic, or have a timeline, that type of thing. Um, I always like this one. If you plan to fail, you, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Those are the big slogans of, of the years, and maybe people still use them today. Maybe you hear that at work. You know, I don't know if you have the little worksheets and work times do at work. All that stuff comes around. And, and the thing is, they're, actually, they're right. You know, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I've slipped away from them, but, uh, but, but, but they're right. Um, and, and so with, with goals on my mind, I thought, let's, let's do that today. Let, let's let's do, to kind of shake things up. We honestly didn't know if there'd be six people here or 600 because we just didn't know. Uh, on, on, look, you all were out late and you came anyway. Um, and so after we had the place torn apart anyway, I thought, let's just throw tables out. We'll make it kind of a working day uh, and, and give you an opportunity to actually write some stuff down. I mean, if you want to, no one's going to you know, check your, your work. This is, this is uh, uh, you know, up to you. But on each table, there's, there's papers that you can write on or your kids can write on. Um, there should be plenty of pens. Uh, if there's not one, there should be some around you. Grab something that, that uh, you can follow along on this. And, and, make, and this, anybody can do this. You can be in school and, and, and make goals. You can be in, uh, you know, uh, retired. It doesn't matter where you are in life. You can, you can have goals for your life, and they will help direct uh, your year. Um, here are some... I, I, I thought about... Um, First of all, having all these scripture about why you should have goals, I thought, okay, I'm not going to make the, the, the argument. It's just out there. There's plenty of scriptures on counting the costs and being measured and planning and, and that type of thing. There's plenty of out there. Uh, and we could have done that, but I didn't want to make this into like a seven-week series. I just want to get it done today. So we just, what we're going to do today is just talk about some different scripture in different areas of life that we could maybe work on goals with ourselves personally. And I want to start with a foundation, just some quick principles to build your, your goals on. Number one is faith, right? When, when, when you make a goal, understand your God can do anything, right? He can do immeasurably more than you ask or imagine. So if your biggest goal in life is, I just hope to wake up in the morning, um, and, unless you're in, in a terminal situation, you might not wake up tomorrow, that's not a very big goal, right? I mean, assume you have a God that can help you accomplish things, and he, and he wants to do things for you. So, so make a goal that's worthy of, of, of a goal. Um, humility, uh, that's the second foundational principle here. And we never want to be in a, in a position where uh, we get angry at God because our goal doesn't, you know, I made this great godly goal and you didn't help me get it done. 
um, you know, he's still God and you're still not. You know, you, you want to ask him, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want to accomplish through me? Um, at the same time, realize he maybe, he, maybe the journey was the more important thing than the goal. I don't know. He's smarter than we are in that. So, so it has some humility in this uh, as well. If you have a goal to win the um, Publishers Clearinghouse uh, this year, um, you, you might. Uh, that'd be cool. <laughs> Uh, but don't get mad at God if you don't. <laughs> you, you know, uh, he maybe he has a different plan. A uh, commitment is another one. Make make goals that you actually will commit to doing. You know, um, it's easy on paper to say I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this and I'm going to I'm going to do the, I'm going to change the world. It's like well, that's a great noble desire. But do something you can actually with with the help of God and, and, and a plan uh, accomplish. So don't so don't overdo it. Um, Second, uh, the next one would be perseverance. Uh, this is a year-long journey. This isn't the thing that, that you're only making a resolution that lasts until February, and then you can quit and get on and ha-ha, it's funny, and next year do it again. It's a year-long commitment to this goal. There's going to be side um, trips. There's going to be traps. There's, there, there's just going to be things, temptations to quit and setbacks. Don't, don't, don't give up. I used to work out a lot at a, at a gym, um, <laughs> and uh, we used to joke, we used to kind of tr- uh, really hate the idea of January coming around because the place would swell, right? Everybody's coming to work out, you know, and we would laugh and say, well, don't worry, February's coming, you know, and by February, everybody was gone, and <laughs> we got back to our normal group, and so now I have a gym membership again because that's one of my goals is, is some, some getting in healthy, and I'm like, I don't know if I want to go in January. <laughs> I might wait till February <laughs> just because I don't want to be that guy, but um, uh, or I'll be the one that perseveres. Anyway, per- 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 persevere. Um, the last one is account the cost. Uh, you know, whatever you write down today isn't in stone yet. I mean, because think about it. Maybe do some research. Um, how much is it going to? What's it going to cost? Uh, maybe it's going to affect other people. We'll have some family goals that uh, you need to sit and talk with your family members later to say, hey, are you willing to do this? Uh, this is going to cost something. Time, treasure. It's going to cost something. Uh, so, so count that before uh, you make a goal and put it in stone and, and decide is that something that's really worthy of doing, okay? That's some foundational thoughts. Now, let's get into the five big goals for 2017. I shouldn't say five big goals, five big areas of goals, because you might have two or three goals for each area. Uh, but five, that's what, the, that's what the, uh, the thing says. Five big goals for 2017. One is your spiritual life. Uh, when's the last time you made a goal for your spiritual life? You probably haven't done that at work. So you might have done goal setting at work, but you're probably like, oh, great, another goal setting. You probably didn't hit this one, uh, at least not the way we are. In, in Corinthians, the Apostle Paul writes to a, a church that is filled with people who haven't really focused on their spiritual journey very well. They're just kind of going to church, kind of hanging out, being church people, being Jesus people. But then he says to them in 1 Corinthians 3, the first three verses, Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh. As infants in Christ, I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now, he's looking back, even now you're not yet ready. For some of you, for you are still of the flesh. Basically, he's looking at this church of people saying, you haven't grown. You, you, you haven't moved the peg spiritually. You're the same place you were when I was with you. I still have to talk to you like little baby Christians. In, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1, the author says, We must pay closer, much closer attention to what we have heard, thus we drift away from it. So you may even grow to a certain point. If you're not going to be intentional about your spiritual growth, you will spiritually drift and float away, uh, just like on an inner tube on a lake, and you'll just kind of float away, and all of a sudden you look, Hey, wow, I started way over there. And you'll, you'll just drift. So, so I don't want to be that guy. Right? I don't want to be the guy who drifts away in my faith. I don't want to be the guy who hasn't grown. I, I hope that today I can look back to t- this time, 2016, January 1st, and say, you know, I've made some steps in my growth this year. My spiritual journey has deepened. Um, I, I'm, if, if you can't say that, okay, get over that. Let's put a plan in place to make sure this time next year you can look back and say, this was a great year of growth. For me, so so come up with some goals that um, you can do, and, and, and remember, a goal is not just I want to grow spiritually. How do, how do you measure that? How do you, how do you know? You know, so so come up with things that are that are measurable, that are specific, that are realistic, 
have a completion time um, so that you know if you accomplish it or not. I've, I've come up with three. I'll help you on a couple of these just to give you an idea of what I'm doing. That doesn't mean you, know, you, can, you can do your own goals. But uh, I've come up with three that I'm doing this year. One is I'm going to do a partial fast during Shanna's college spring and fall semester. Um, I did that with, with Danielle through her college. When they were in college, I would do a partial fast throughout the entire semester. When they were on break, I was on break, but when they were in school, I was fasting for them and praying. What that does, it keeps me spiritual alert, it keeps me praying for them, it puts me in a, in a different zone than if I'm just floating along not doing anything. And uh, it's also an encouragement for my children saying, huh, Dad's, Dad's praying for me. And sometimes they would email me or text me, hey, can you pray for whatever this is going on? And uh, it was just kind of a cool journey. So that's, that, that's, that's uh, something I'm going to do this year. Um, I'm going to choose one day per month for a complete fast. I've heard this so many times in conferences, reading books, whatever, that, that, that guys should take at least once a month where they just get away with a Bible and a notebook and nothing else. Leave your phone behind, just disconnect from the world and connect with God. And I always think, that's a good idea. And I've never made that a, a discipline. You know, um, I've even... You know, I've heard churches say that's like a requirement for their staff people. I never required my staff to, to get away for a day, um, probably because it was different. They were all part-time. And anyway, that, that, you know, I, I talked myself out of it. But, um, I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to do it. This could, it could happen to me. Um, I'm going to do it. I need to hear from God. Uh, I need to, to be praying. I need to be fasting. Um, and I need to do that. Number three, I'm going to read a chapter of Proverbs every day in 2017. Why Proverbs? I don't know. It's, it's good. It's cool. It's wise. Um, it's got 31 chapters. Uh, so whatever day of the week it is, I know that's the chapter I'm going to be reading that day. Um, and again, that's something I heard in college uh, at a conference years ago. And I always thought, that'd be kind of cool. And I've never done it. I mean, I've read Proverbs. I just haven't said, I'm going to do a proverb every, every day. So today is the first. I'll read Proverbs 1. On the 22nd, I'll probably be reading Proverbs 22. Yeah, you're good. Um, and and, and that's, that's just my plan. I figure it can't hurt me to have a little extra wisdom in my life. Now, now that's, I do a lot of scripture reading, but usually it's for studying or it's for something else I got going on. This is just for me. I'm just going to sit back and read a chapter. That's not going to kill me. That's not going like, to consume my time um, more than I have to give. Uh, so that's just my road for spiritual growth this week, this year. I want you to think for a moment, what can you do? What will you do? And, and, you know, we're, it's a different setting today. We're just having like a little family talk, right? So shout it out. Is there, what ideas? Those are my ideas. What, what can you think of? What are goals that you can measure that are specific, that you can have a completion on of potential goals? You might help someone else. Um, a potential goals for your spiritual walk. Any ideas? Invite 10 people to church. That, that is a, a spiritual battle that takes place in there, which will lead to growth. Read through the Bible this year. You know if you did it or not. <laughs> yep. I got a friend who does it every single year. Oh, he humbles me. <sighs> Any other thoughts? Tithe. I like that one. <laughs> did you say? Did you say tithe? <laughs> that's a, that's a ten percent, right? <laughs> uh, no, that, that that is a spiritual battle as well, and and, and an area of, of, of growth. Um, uh, it might be join a small group if you're not part of one. It might be if you're not part of a, one of our life transformation groups. I should have made sure we had pamphlets out. Um, uh, finding someone that you partner with. It's, it's a, you're reading a lot of scripture. You're having accountability. There's lots of things. Think about that. You don't have to have the total answer right now. But write it on your sheet and um, make that a goal for the year. One or two or three. Whatever it is you want. I, I just went up with three because, I don't know, three, three seem to work. And then now once you do a goal... You want action steps. Otherwise, it's just this cool statement. You're like, yeah, I'm going to do that. Have some action steps for it. So like on my, um, that'd be your ABCs in the little outline there. Uh, on my uh, partial fast during Shanna's college, spring and fall semesters, um, an action step is, well, find out what the dates are. <laughs> I mean, you know, I need to know when it starts and when it finishes, right? Uh, how will I know if it's, how do I measure it? So I'm going to find out the dates. Uh, I'm going to decide what I'm going to fast. I know this semester I'm, I'm going to do sweets. I'm going to do pop, I'm going to do fried food. Okay? So, so that's out for me for the first semester. So it'll also be healthy for me, but it'll also be something when I want to have it, I'll be, oh yeah, pray for Shanna. And uh, that'll be the reminder. So I'm going to, it's a detail I need to have down. And then I usually will have a prayer focus, like two or three things uh, that I'm praying for in the fast. Pray for their social life, pray for uh, 
their spiritual life, whatever, you know, you know, I'll have that written down, and I usually have that sitting on my computer or somewhere where I see it a lot uh, in the beginning because it changes, you know, from time to time, so I don't want to, don't want to forget. So, so make some action steps for every one of your goals, and uh, that'll be good. On, on the, um, the one day per month to fast, I, I made some action steps. I have a little to-do app in, in, in my phone, so I just need to put it in my phone to remind me to come up with a date. <laughs> Otherwise, a month will go by, I go, oh, I never did that last month. That's what I've done the last 20 years. Uh, so I don't know how that pattern's going to change unless I have a daily reminder popping up, slap me, saying, hey, uh, yeah, don't forget a date. So then I can, if I get annoyed by that, I'll select a date, then I'll check that off my list. I've got to put it in my calendar and empty my schedule for that day. So those are action steps, but they have to be done. So what it, you know, just, just come up with action steps for your goals. Uh, read a chapter of Proverbs every day in 2017. Again, I'll put that in my to-do app. So every day I'll, I'll, I'll check that thing off, and uh, I'll make sure I don't go to sleep until I read a, a, a chapter. Um, or I'll make sure I make up for it the next day or something. But it's, it's, it's a plan. Because that's, that's your spiritual walk. It, make some type of goal or goals for your uh, spiritual walk. May, maybe, anyway, yeah, just, just, just do that. A second area is your family life. Uh, I don't know if you think much about making goals for your family, um, but, but, but that's important. It's, it's an important thing to do. Uh, a scripture for us guys, anyway, is Ephesians 5. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, gave himself up for her. He might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that uh, she might be holy without blemish. Now, we can read these scriptures and go home and say, yeah, yeah, I need to be a better lover of my spouse. Um, or we can say, no, I'm going to put a plan in place to make sure I am a better lover of my spouse. And so it's good to have a plan in place. Uh, like I've said I know, a month or so ago, I'm in a different stage now than I was even last year. You know, I have a daughter who's married. I have one who's really moved out, living in an apartment in Ames, but comes back on a weekend. So it's a different family dynamic. So my goals are going to focus mostly on uh, Cheryl, my wife. How do I make this the best year ever for her in our marriage? Uh, if I don't do something intentionally for that, it's not going to happen. I'll just think, yeah, that should happen. That'd be neat. Uh, so I've got to write some things down. So, so I've, I've got some things. I'm going to do a vacation. We're going to take a vacation uh, over spring break. Why? Because uh, their school's moving this summer. It's crazy for her, blah, blah, blah. There's going to be a time she can get a little getaway. So we'll plan a vacation. Uh, side the house. That may sound silly, but the house, um, um, uh, it, it's to the point where like, ooh, the siding's going to fall off. You know, it's just like, that'll just make her feel better knowing that her house is going to fall in. That's kind of important to her. I don't know. Um, and uh, a date night. Uh, once a week with, with, with Cheryl. Let's make sure it happens. Otherwise, too many weeks go by, we just don't do it. We just, we just, we just get busy, blah, blah, blah. You don't get out. You don't do stuff. Um, uh, your goals will be obviously different. Maybe it'll be something to do with your children, a date night with your child, uh, every so often, or reading X number of books with the kiddos, going to a park, family dinners. Maybe you're going to eat out more. Maybe you're going to eat out less, you know, depending on your family dynamic. Uh, something that's specific Something that's measured. What, what do you think? What are some family goals you could make? I just threw a few ideas out. It's, it's a working lunch, right? So you can talk. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Read your Bible uh, three times a week or so with your children. So you're, it's a family thing that's important to us. Family dinner. Kind of a lost art. Cheryl said she's going to throw away our TV trays. <laughs> I can't watch the news, though. Go to the park once a week. That just won't happen unless you make it happen, right? I mean, unless you have a thing and you can check it off, and yep, I did it. There's all kinds of things. So be, be creative. Engage, engage your mind in this. Uh, this is something that, uh, uh, you know, your children don't have to know you accomplished a goal by taking them to the park, but it will be important to your family. It'll be, it'll be a good thing to do, and it'll enhance your, your family life. Um, what did I do? I came up with some uh, action steps. Vacation. Uh, so this is, this is all, I, I won't do this with the rest of these, but I'll, I'll do it here. Uh, select a location uh, in line with our savings, all right? So I'm not going to, you know, sorry, Cheryl, we're not going to the Bahamas. Um, Altoona is a good possibility, but... Um, <laughs> We'll go somewhere, all right? <laughs> we'll look at the, the savings and, and see what plan we have. We'll judge it by that. But I want to come up with a, t uh, a place, though, by January 15th. I'll know if that happened or not, right? So I have a deadline um, and, and plan some activities. We'll usually plan at least a handful. I know I'm 
have a reputation for not being a planner, but we actually do plan things. Um, we'll have at least a few ideas. Um, usually, I, I know how this works, I have to have them paid for, so Cheryl can't say, oh no, we can't do that. It's like, well, now we'll waste money. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll plan some things. Uh, side the house, I've got to count the house. How much is this thing going to cost? Uh, it's makes night stuff, it's not, not crazy. Um, start saving for that. Select a Saturday to do it. Beg a few people to help. I, I saw you how fat quickly you guys put Saturday in a house uh, a couple years ago. So uh, you're on my list. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, have, have uh, four date nights with Cheryl per month. You know, just got to coordinate calendars. Hey, when are we free? And, and, and write it down, make sure it happens. See, it's not that difficult, but it, but, but it needs, needs, needs to be done. That's your family life. Three is your social life. I read through this Acts 2 again. I know this comes up a lot because it's such a key verse in, in the church and the history of the church and, and what every church wants to become. But uh, I thought, man, this is a social group right here. The day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they received food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, having favor with all the people, not just church people, all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This describes a very social group of people. They, they, were, they got to know people. They, they, they knew their, their community. They knew the people they were in church with. They, they hung out together. Uh, all the people knew that was going on, and because of the reputation of the church, people were coming, and because of the reputation of Jesus and what he's doing in the church, people were coming to know Jesus, and the, and the church was growing. This is what Jesus talked about when he talked about being yeast and salt in our world. It's just being, being social, being out there with, with people. Um, so I thought, we need some social goals. Um, now, obviously, I haven't... Uh, Obviously, you don't know this, but I haven't talked to Cheryl about these. So, some, you know, we'll sit down after this and say, hey, which of these goals are appropriate? We'll count the cost and, and see if this, this works. So we'll, we'll, we'll put this together sometime this week. Um, uh, we decided a few years ago uh, when we were trying to, we were first planting the church. like, where's the community? Where is the community in Johnston? Like, there's no downtown. There's no, I mean, you know, it's just like, where, where, where are we? And we finally decided uh, it's the schools, Right. Um, it's where everything happens. It's where people gather. That's where things are happening. Um, so like Cheryl has a job at the school. I do a lot of mentoring and volunteering at the school. I do a lot of school stuff uh, to be with the community. But there's more social things we can do. So, so I just wrote down some goals. I'm going to attend four basketball games and three football games. Um, hopefully more. But, but uh, I don't think we, like the kids graduated and all of a sudden we didn't care at all. I, don't, I couldn't even tell you. That, does that sound bad to say we didn't care? If you're on a team, we cared. No, we didn't go to a game. I haven't gone to a game for a while. Maybe, we, did we go to one last year? We went to one football game. Anyway, we will be intentional because the community is out there. And if nothing else, we're getting conversations. We see people. Uh, so that, that's a, a way to get us out of home. Um, and we won't do it unless I write it down. I uh, have supper with one pathway family per month. Supper, lunch, whatever. We're gonna, we need to connect with one family per month. Um, start a small group in our home by March 1st. Now, we're in a small group. We're not going to leave that small group because we love that small group. But we need another small group because we need some in Johnston. Uh, so, so we'll have two small groups, but that'll just make us really social, um, and uh, that'll be fun. So, I haven't talked to Cheryl about counting that cost yet. Uh, <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, so we need a small group so they'll feel guilty and want to be part of it, is that what you're saying? Oh. <laughs> we'll have that conversation later. <laughs> I'm having fun. Um, okay, I'm not going to go through the action steps there. I don't want to run out of time. You know, you can come up with action steps for your goals. Social life, thoughts on, thoughts on it. Do you have any, any ideas? Help, help us out. Obviously, I need help on this. I will tell you that once a month, the Connections Ministry uh, on my phone pops up and says, oh, that's today. And then I don't tell anybody, so we don't meet. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, in theory. But, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a... Write that down, Cheryl. <laughs> we'll make sure that gets... Because, really, that's an important thing. That helps the church in community and connect and, and do things. A lot of the things we do, the, 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 the Christmas party, the... Um, Valentine's party, the, just the different dinners we have and stuff. With usually the connections group that gets together and plans things, fun like that. Um, and uh, so that that is a little help. Uh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Social life, physical body number number four. Can we just skip this one? Because <laughs> this was going to cause the most pain for me. Um, 
1 Corinthians 6. All things are lawful for me. This, I've, I've kind of abbreviated. This isn't the whole text, but all things are lawful for me. Not all things are helpful. All things are lawful. I will not be dominated by anything like donuts and stuff like that, right? Uh, food is meant for the stomach and stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? Uh, you are not your own. You were bought with a price. Glorify God in your body. Now, now the context of this verse is really sexual immorality, but I think the application goes to, to a, lot of, a lot of things. And I guess I look at my own uh, body, and uh, I have uh, made some goals to, to glorify God more appropriately with my body uh, this year. Um, one goal is I'm going to lose and, and keep off 70 pounds by just like, give me a full year. By December 31st, I know I can do it. I mean, it's just, I know. It's, it's really not difficult. Uh, eat less. It's, it's every single choice. It's a daily choice. And uh, maybe be a little more active. Um, so I've got both those things covered right now. And as far as my planning goes and my steps, that's very detailed, actually. Um, and uh, instead of joking like I did every day this year, next, that starts next month. That's Monday. I'm going to start that on Monday. No, it actually starts, well, on Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> Got a Hawkeye game tomorrow. <laughs> I may not eat healthily. Um, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I need to glorify God with my body. I need to take dominion over areas that have dom- dominated me. And, and um, that's, that's it's going to happen because I have a plan and I have a check off and I have, I have a, a play, uh, yeah, plan in place. Uh, an action plan is what I'm trying to say. Uh, cardio workout, I average at least three times a week, hopefully five. But I, I thought, oh, I'm gonna at least, I'll say three for the goal and, and shoot for higher. Um, and that's what I'll be doing with my, my gym membership. So anyway, that's what's going on there. What, what do you think? There's, there's, that's, there's lots of other things out there. What, what would be an appropriate physical goal? Go to the gym more? Absolutely. That's, a fair, that's one of mine. That's what I'm going to be doing. Eating clean? Eating clean? Oh, don't, don't do that. <laughs> Less cookies? Oh, people are painful. You're meddling. You're meddling. <laughs> I, I, did, I did weigh myself a week ago, and it's the most I've ever weighed in my life. And I thought, okay, this is ridiculous. It's just plain ridiculous. And it's my fault. I can't blame anyone but myself. Um, no soda? Not even, yeah, diet. Yeah, I've been reading stuff. Yeah. Uh, more sleep? Uh, our future dentist here, you want to say anything right now? It's a good opportunity. Floss? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I put you on the spot like that. Okay, uh, let, let's go on. Number five. Uh, you, you guys call it stuff other than church to do today, right? Um, number five, this is the last one. Uh, your work life. And, and possibly you've already had big meetings with this at work. You know, I'm not you know, I'm trying to interfere with your... Uh, this isn't any fancier than probably... You, you probably have more sophisticated stuff than this. But uh, uh, maybe not. Maybe you haven't had this. So, so come up with some goals for your work life. Um, I, I often think of Colossians when I, you know, work in a you know, work environment. Uh, whatever you do, work heartily is for the Lord, not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. Uh, you're serving the Lord Christ. I'm doing this for Jesus. So you go to work. Uh, the next time you go to work, it's not for you. It's not for a paycheck. It's not for your boss. It's not for your family. It's for Jesus. He's my God. He's my Savior. He's my boss today. Uh, what are you going to do for him? Um, what, what kind of goals could you possibly have in work? And it depends on your work. I realize that we all have different jobs. Uh, it could be a sales, sell more. It could be don't not go to work. <laughs> Quit calling in sick. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. I don't have a real job, right? I don't have a... <laughs> I was looking at my work goals, and this is pitiful. This, <laughs> but I'll, I'll share mine. Any thoughts? What do you do if you're retired? Oh, there's got to be, there's work goals, right? You can have, uh, I'm going to retire well, right? I'm going I'm to, whatever that means. I'm not there yet. Give me a few years. <laughs> Clean closets. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Write it down. I'll be calling you. <laughs> Mow the yard. There you go. <laughs> Mow the lawn. Yeah. Here, here's my work uh, goals, and, and I probably shouldn't have put this up there because it, it almost it sounds terrible. I, I really need to take a day off. I, I just don't. I mean, that's actually biblical, Sabbath, you know. 
And it's too easy in, in like, I don't have time clocks. I just kind of have, you know, it's just, it's just, I'm a different world than, than a lot of you uh, as far as work, right? And, and so, so I, I rarely take a day off. I just need to. I just need to. I tell myself, and that doesn't, the fasting day doesn't count. <laughs> well, maybe I took a day over and I didn't do anything. Um, anyway, I need to take off. I, I need to live with myself 55, 60 hours a week because it's unhealthy. I, I've been unhealthy lately there. I just, just, it's just, I'm overdoing it. Um, and, and anyway, yeah. And uh, more legitimately, well, those are legitimate too. Uh, I need to meet with, with all the ministry leaders uh, more uh, routinely uh, for coaching, encouragement, goal review. Uh, so if you're in a ministry of a church here, think about some goals for your church, uh, for your ministry. We'll talk about that individually uh, in, in the coming uh, weeks and weeks and months. Um, so, okay, that, that's it. Um, I, I suspect you probably haven't had time like, to fill out a whole worksheet and everything, but, but I encourage you honestly to sit down this week, maybe even today, whenever you can, when it's fresh in your mind, and sit down and what are some goals for your life? What are some action steps to make it happen? As, as, as unusual as it is for us to do this, something like this today on a Sunday morning, uh, it will literally change. It, this could change your, your spiritual walk more than anything we do this, this year because it will maybe engage you more in some of the things we're doing. We have so many opportunities out there uh, for growth and for discipleship, and it's nothing more disheartening than have people not grow or be discipled because they chose not to, uh, just from my, from my point of view. Um, so hopefully this will help you engage with things. Engage with your family, engage with your spiritual walk and your, your Savior and your, your work, your physical body, everything. Um, spend some time and go over this with whoever this affects. Like, I really need to stand with Cheryl and say, here's my goals, where are your goals, how to, because like, some of the things I do will affect her. You know, um, maybe she doesn't want to go on a date with me once a week. You know, no, you're going to go on a date with me. Um, she's like, I got better things to do. Um, she, I got to do laundry. I don't know. Uh, you know, we need, we'll have to have that conversation and, and, and figure out what, what really works. But it'd be nice if by this time next week you have a nice little sheet of paper um, and uh, however, whatever it is that works for you. Um, so that this year you will actually grow spiritually and grow in your family and grow physically, you know, all these things, and, and, and make advances. Because uh, that's, that's what we're talking about. Um, well, it's a good time to start. January 1st, right? All right, let's pray.